All right, so we're going to go through how to use the graphical interface built within VS Code in order to create a Git repository, and then how the workflow is on pushing your stuff up there uh, and on pulling stuff down, kind of keeping things in sync. So I've got this project here um, that already has a Git ignore file to keep my node modules out, and it's already set up and ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this source control icon over here, and that's gonna take me to this page. Now, if your Git repository has already been initialized, then this will look drastically different. If you go into the folder and you show the hidden folder, uh, the, the .git folder that commands everything, you can delete that folder and it will go back to showing this. So what we wanna do is click publish to GitHub, and then right here, we're going to put in our name. So we're going to call this test one, and I can choose whether it's public or private. Now, most of the time, you're going to want your stuff to be public, unless you're working with sensitive information. Uh, so I'm going to click the public one, and now it is going to go through and create a public repository. So you can see it was published down here. So I can click this open on GitHub. And I can go in here and I can go to my repositories. And I have this test one repository here. And all of my files have been pushed up now. Now, I don't have anything in this index.js. So let's go over to the index.js and we'll add some comments in. We're going to say, Michael was here. And then I'm going to declare an array. We'll say let names array equal, and we're going to put these three names in it. And so I'm done. I'm stopping. I want to make sure that all of my changes have been pushed up to GitHub. So I'm going to click on source control here. Now, there are a few things going on over here that are useful to know about. First off, these are all the changes that have happened. It's only that one file right now. If I want to stage these, like you would do the git add command in the terminal for if you were doing it in the terminal, you can click this plus button here. Now, if you want to see the changes, you can click the M and it'll pull up and show you everything that was modified on the file. Now that I've got it staged, I'm going to type in my commit message here. I'm going to put second push just so that we can identify it easily. And then I'm gonna click commit. Now, that didn't push it. That just committed it locally. If I wanted to keep working and do another commit, like add another feature in, commit it again, I can do that and push multiple commits up at the same time. Right now, in order to push that up, I'm gonna click sync changes. So that has pushed my change up. So I can go back over here to GitHub. I can refresh this page. And now I can see Michael was here and this names array that was created. Now there are some settings built into VS Code that will pull down your code when you first go into these. Um, I really like that. If you're ever working on something that is out of sync when you first get into it, it's going to show the little bubble over on source control. And that'll give you a pretty good indicator of what you need to do as far as getting things back in line. Um, so let's say I'm over here. I'm going to add more comments. I'm done. Now I'm ready to, to push my stuff up. Now there is another way that I can do this. I can say third time here, and I can click this down arrow and choose to commit and push. Now, if you'll notice, I didn't stage this. So I'm going to do commit and push. And the very first thing that should have happened, if you haven't already set it to default to adding things or staging things automatically, is it'll pop up a dialog box at that point. It'll ask, do you always want to stage things automatically? Do you just this time want to stage them automatically or never? Uh, I set mine to always because I have a bad habit of just pushing things directly up. But if you're working with sensitive stuff, you may not want to do that. 
So this is pretty much the grand overview of how you do uh, pushing things up to GitHub and setting up repositories. It's a lot quicker doing it this way than it is in the terminal down here. Now, the terminal does give you some more granular control over what you're doing, but I've found that whichever way you're going to use it the most is the most useful for you using GitHub. This is meant to be utilized not just as a backup, but as a working history. So every time you add something new that's working, feel free to push it up to GitHub. The way this is designed, it's only going to push the changes that happened right then. So if I go and I click this third time, and I look at the history here, and I'm looking at third time and I click here, this is the only change that happened. It literally just tracks the changes that have occurred. So you can feel comfortable that you're not sending a, a huge amount of data up and down, that you're literally just sending what has changed. So it, it doesn't cost anything to do it. It actually gives you a little bit of insurance because you're protecting yourself. So push your code often, happy coding.